Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Do Some Algae Make the Earth Warmer? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal PNAS published on February 4th, 2020. Research conducted by Adrian Berlicat, Gilles Pelletier, and others from the Institute of Biosciences and Biotechnologies at Aix-Marseille University. See the full list of authors in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. If you have ever visited a lake, a pond, or even the ocean, then you know about algae, not only the big ones that wash up on the beach, but also the much smaller microalgae. Responsible for the green you see on the water, these tiny organisms are not only the foundation of the aquatic food web, but they also photosynthesize. That means they take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere like plants, and we all know how important that is because of global warming. Interestingly, some algae also produce nitrous oxide, another greenhouse gas. We wanted to find out which type of algae produces it and how they create it. We tested different types of algae in both light and dark environments, which made us realize that only green algae make nitrous oxide from nitric oxide, and they have different ways of doing it based on the amount of light available. We also linked the nitric oxide production to fertilizers, implying that there may be a way to reduce the amount of nitrous oxide produced by algae in the future. Introduction. When you hear the term greenhouse gas, the first gas that comes to mind is probably carbon dioxide, or CO2. Society considers this heat trapping gas as the main culprit of global warming, However, there are other greenhouse gases. While they exist at much lower levels than carbon dioxide, they are often more able to trap outgoing heat energy from the Earth. Nitrous oxide, or N2O, is one of these stronger greenhouse gases, and scientists are trying to figure out how to reduce its impact on the global climate. To do so, we must first understand what produces it. For some time, scientists noticed a correlation between algal blooms and nitrous oxide, but they didn't understand how algae produced this gas. In this study, we wanted to figure out the link between algae and nitrous oxide. How do algae produce it? Does light affect this process? And is there a way that we can reduce its production? Here's an image showing an algal bloom on a pond surface. Methods. Experiment one. We conducted a nitric oxide, or NO, and nitrous oxide, N2O, exchange experiment by placing algae into an anaerobic environment that contained nitric oxide. Then we used a special type of mass spectrometer to measure how the amount of nitric oxide and nitrous oxide changed over time. We ran the experiment in the dark and in light to see how things changed. Then we ran the experiment again in an aerobic environment that contained nitrite, a common fertilizer, as the source of nitric oxide to better simulate what would happen naturally. Experiment 2. The algae species we use contain flavodiiron proteins, or FLVs, and cytochrome P450, or CYP55, which are both families of enzymes. These enzymes help add electrons to nitric oxide, causing it to transform into nitrous oxide, a process known as reduction. We conducted the NO and N2O exchange experiment again, but with mutated algae species that were either missing the FLVs or CYP55. We ran the experiment in both the light and dark and compared the results to experiment one. Experiment three. We conducted the same NO and N2O exchange experiment with nine species of algae. These species included green algae, red algae, and diatoms. Two of the nine species had both types of enzymes, two species had only the flavodiiron proteins, and five species did not have either enzymes. We ran the experiment in both the light and dark and compared the results to experiment one. Results. Experiment one. This experiment showed that algae produced nitrous oxide in both the dark and the light. However, the rate of this production is faster in the light. Similar results occurred when we used nitrite, a common fertilizer. 
The algae transform the nitrite into nitric oxide before reducing it to nitrous oxide in both the light and dark. Experiment 2. Algae mutants without FLVs produced about the same amount of nitrous oxide in the dark, but significantly less in the light. The algae mutants without CYP55 produced the same amount of nitrous oxide in the light, but did not produce any nitrous oxide in the dark. You can see these results in figure one. The graph shows the rate of nitrous oxide production in the dark and in the light for algae with both flavodiiron proteins, FLVs, and cytochrome P450, or CYP55, as well as the mutant algae species missing one of the enzyme families. Algae grown in the dark can be seen in purple, while algae grown in the light can be seen in orange. In the graph, the y-axis represents the nitrous oxide production rate in amount per minute, and the x-axis represents the three different types of algae. Which enzyme family is responsible for nitrous oxide production in the dark? In the light? Experiment 3. Green algae took in nitric oxide and used it to produce nitrous oxide. The red algae and diatoms took in nitric oxide, but they did not produce nitrous oxide from it. Discussion. Our data show that there are two ways algae make nitrous oxide. When there was light, algae used flavodiiron proteins to reduce nitric oxide to nitrous oxide. When it was dark, cytochrome P450 produced nitrous oxide. Also, because algae produce nitrous oxide faster in light than in darkness, we know that photosynthesis aided this process. Our results also prove that only green algae produce nitrous oxide through the reduction of nitric oxide. Since green algae have both types of enzymes, the chemical pathways we discovered are the only ones producing nitrous oxide in algae. Our experiment using nitrite demonstrated the link between fertilizer use and the formation of nitrous oxide by algae. Runoff carrying fertilizer from agriculture and residential areas to coastal waters and lakes will contain nitrite. Just like the green algae in our experiment, the algae in coastal waters will transform it to nitric oxide. Because nitric oxide is toxic, the algae reduce it to nitrous oxide, which is less harmful. Unfortunately, this gas is harmful in a different way, as a strong greenhouse gas. Conclusion Global warming is a real concern. Increasing temperatures are already impacting both our climate and our oceans. We must lower the production of greenhouse gases, and now we know that we should also decrease the amount of fertilizer runoff into lakes and the ocean. You can help reduce the amount of fertilizer runoff from your garden. Plant a garden with native plants because they need less fertilizer. Apply fertilizer at the right time of year and in the right amount for your plants. Avoid applying it right before storms so it is not carried to the closest body of water, where algae can transform it into nitrous oxide. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.